There is nothing more confusing than when your head tells you one thing and your heart tells you another. And sometimes we don't know what to do with the contradicting information. And we remain in a relationship even if we know it's not bad, even if we know it's not good for us. We can't quite seem to make our heart and our, and our brain line up. That's called cognitive dissonance. And I was speaking with someone recently about this. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you're be what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And I tried to explain in three words or less. But I finally decided when you're in the middle of cognitive dissonance, you're not going to understand that you're in the middle of cognitive dissonance. A great example of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive means you're knowing something and the dissonance is exactly what it sounds like. You know it's bad for you, but you do it anyway. Smoking cigarettes is one thing that comes to mind. People know it's bad for them by now, 100%. We've known for 50 years, right? We've known it. We know it's bad. There's no debate in that. Nobody's ever gonna come up and say, oh, come on, it's not that bad. Yes, it is. We all know it. And I've never smoked cigarettes, but I know a lot of smokers that do this. I know it's bad for me. You're going to die from something. That's cognitive, that cognitive dissonance that they know it's bad, but they want to do it. That's making them come up with justifications to do it. I'm going to die from something. So-and-so smoked till they were 98. They smoked every day. You'll hear it all the time. Smokers use the example George Burns. If you're young, you don't know who he is. But they'll say, George, the comedian, I think George Burns was 100 or even over 100. George Burns smoked his cigars till he died. Okay, that's not a justification for you to smoke cigarettes. Same thing when you're in a relationship with a narcissist. Your cognitive dissonance is that your brain knows full well that the things they're doing to you are in correct, not proper, mean, ugly, betrayal behavior, horrible, right? Terrible, terrible. A, a person with narcissistic personality disorder, and some of the stories I've heard from you guys, and my story, abominable behavior, yet we stay. We know it's not good for us, yet we stay. Cognitive dissonance. To allow those to line up, your head and your heart, what you have to do is admit some things to yourself. Shake yourself out of the comfortable spot of trying to ignore the truth by saying, I'm going to die from something. I've heard this, this, um, a parallel to that in relationships with someone with, not, I've heard people say, well, you know, you throw him back and then you're just going to get somebody else with problems. You may. You may find somebody who has other problems, but they might not have this disorder. So they might not be ill-functioning in society. They may not be mean to you every other day and then pepper it with love bombing so you're confused and you can't leave. Cognitive dissonance keeps us there just as much as prom trauma bonding does and just as much as addiction does because you can't make sense of things. I'm a bright girl. I said to myself a million times, I'm a bright girl. What is wrong with me? Why can't I leave this person? Why can't I? I know he's bad for me. But my heart felt I was in love. Why? Because of that love bombing stage in the beginning when they make you think you found your prince charming, your soulmate, your princess, whatever your gender is for romantic relationships, put whatever name, but you thought you found the and all you really did your heart really did feel that way for a month for three months for whatever it took for them to start the devalue process you felt you were in bliss blissful dumb okay it's hard to go back on your own heart now we have to admit to our heart guess what i was wrong i was wrong i take it all back i didn't love him he wasn't who I thought he was. Now he's showing me his real self. And guess what? I couldn't possibly feel the way that I th thought I felt for this person about this mean person. Yet you don't want to betray yourself. You don't want to betray the feelings you told them. You don't want to look wishy-washy. You want to prove to them that you are loyal and I told you I loved you and I meant it. You know what? No, I didn't. I take it back. I wish I said that. I take it back. That's what I wish I said, but I didn't.
I let it dissipate and I finally discarded several times it took me, but I discarded. And it's just a matter of alignment. And if your head is telling you things are bad, I promise you, you are a bright person. You're gaining education through this channel and probably others. We who look up narcissistic personality disorder don't just go to one channel. And I appreciate you guys for tuning into mine. Thank you. And share with people who you think are going through this. They don't even know the vocabulary, the words, the ideas of it, the, what's happening. They have no idea. I knew nothing. Nothing. I knew nothing. And I didn't understand what was happening to me. And I'm sitting there going, I'm a bright girl. I'm from a good family. They love me. I have healthy relationship outside of this. What is the problem, Renee? Finally, I realized, okay, listen to your brain. This is bad for you. Heart, what's up? Started to learn, look things up, learned about love bombing. Oh, so he reeled me in. Oh, that wasn't really the real him. Oh, when the mask drops and, and they start devaluing, that's the real him? The bad guy is the real him, which that's it. The bad person is the real them. Their mask is out and the real them is out to play. And there's nothing about the real them that we like when they start mistreating us. Yet we told ourselves we love them. Cognitive dissonance. We now know the truth. The dissonance is we know the truth, but we're separate from it because we're still over here remembering that we love them, though. Don't I love them? I fell in love with them. Where's that guy who said this? Where's that guy who did that? Where's that guy who put me on a pedestal? He's gone. And your brain feels it, but your heart sticks around waiting for him to show up again. Your brain knows it's bad for you just like cigarette smoking, but you want to do it anyway. And you will tell yourself anything to justify it. Anything. Well, he is a good guy and I'll just get, I'll inherit somebody else's problems. And I've, I've heard this one. I've already trained this one. I've already put in the 10 years. Why am I going to start over with somebody else? Oh my God. Starting over with somebody else because it could be no problems like the ones you're experiencing with a person. And I don't tell people to leave. This isn't a video about, or a week's video, a week's worth of videos trying to tell you to leave. What I am trying to perk up in your brain is, if you feel you want to, but you cannot, here's some of the reasons. And, and me learning about this, I started to look and go, okay, that makes sense to me. I know it's bad, but my heart is still involved because of the love bombing. Oh, wait. They're not really the person they were in love bombing and I'll never really see them that way again, which you won't. You can't. You cannot. You can't unsee bad acts. You can't unsee ugly truths. You can't come back around and be ignorant to the bad side of them like we were in love bombing. We didn't know about the bad side yet. Once that rug is pulled, now we know. And we don't always do better when we know better right away. It takes a while because we have to have that head and that heart line up. Don't lose faith in yourself for that to happen. Look at the truth of your situation. That's all I ever say to people is, please look at your truth and see it for what it is. Don't disguise it and say, well, you're gonna die of something anyway. The parallel would be, well, I'm gonna inherit somebody else's problems anyway. You may not. There are plenty of healthy, well-adjusted people in this world. And not for nothing, it doesn't even have to do with finding anybody else. I just spit. I get very exacerbated. I'm, I've am i chosen right now. I'm alone and I'm not hooked up with anybody. I'm blissfully happy. The last 45 days were blissfully happy. Holidays, no problems, only laughter, only love, only singing, only dancing. Not, not a problem in sight, okay? Not a problem in sight. So I'm not looking to fill the hole. So you might say, well, if I get rid of him, then I'm going to be alone. You might. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. Embrace it. Embrace that. Don't let that keep you with somebody. I have the happiest life of anybody I know. And I'm, you'd call me alone, but I'm not lonely. Not at all. And not even if I'm sitting alone in my house like the last few days. Saturday I was with friends, but the last couple of days, I've just been here with Minnie, 
putzing around, happy as anything. There's nobody bothering me. It's peace and quiet. I'm not going to sell you on being alone. But don't let the fact that you may not find someone make you stay in a relationship where you're miserable because I guarantee you being alone will be, without that strife, you will be happier. You will be happier. Sit with yourself. Become introspective. Look at your life. Look at your truth. Look at your truth and see it for what it is. If you're stuck in cognitive dissonance, you just have to ask yourself some tough questions and you can break out of at least that. Even if you don't leave, I want you to know the truth of your situation and eventually it will line up with your heart. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Please go ahead and hit sub, like, and share so others can learn this too. I thank you very much. Have a good weekend.